And until today, despite this continued attack, war is what the World Court, Court called it, that we've waged on Nicaragua, Nicaragua has yet to commit one act of war against the United States. But instead of joining them and building the healthiest, most dynamic, most enthusiastic country in Central America, we spent over a billion dollars during the 80s to destabilize the country. We set out systematically to create conditions where the farmer could not get his produce to market, where children couldn't go to school, where women were terrified inside their homes as well as outside their homes of being attacked, where the hospitals were treating wounded people instead of sick people, where government administration grinds to a halt, where the trucks don't run, the bridges are blown, the salaries aren't paid, you can't get a driver's license, all the infrastructure breaks down, and of course eventually international capital is scared away and the country plunges into chaos and bankruptcy. We created the Contra program beginning in about 1981. There was a Newsweek article following up that there was plenty of documentation on this on November 7 and 8, 1982, that said, here we go again, we've done this before, it's been a mistake before, we're going into Nicaragua, once again we're, we're supporting the wrong side, Newsweek noted. It said that we had elected to support the only truly evil, totally unacceptable faction in the Nicaraguan equation, that being the remnants of Somoza's hated National Guard. But using Argentine trainers at first and then eventually CI mercenaries, we armed and directed this small army from bases mostly in Honduras to attack in Nicaragua and destabilize. Systematically, they were blowing up granaries, sawmills, bridges, government offices, schools, health centers, mines, mining roads, ambushing trucks, raiding farms and villages. We have massive documentation of all this. Terror has been a part of this program. Raw terror as raw as anything that happens in the Middle East or elsewhere. These Contras have been going into villages. They've been hauling families out. With other mem members of the family forced to watch, they've been castrating fathers, gang raping mothers, slashing off their breasts again while the children are forced to watch. Every covert operation, of course, rationalized in terms of national security or anti-communism. We've got lots and lots and lots of these out in the public record. The world is only so big, these things are never completely secret. You can read for yourselves at great length about these things. We've set out to overthrow functioning constitutional democracies in over 20 countries. We manipulated elections in dozens of countries. We created standing armies and directed them to fight. We went after to organize ethnic minorities to encourage them to revolt. The first thing we did in Nicaragua was to go to the Mosquito Indians, who had never gotten along with the other people in Nicaragua very well, and give them more money than they had seen in the entirety of history, and arms and training and rationales and sanctuaries in Honduras, and sent them into Nicaragua to attack, kill, fight, rape, burn, pillage, and this is an insidious thing. Every society is torn with racial conflicts and conflicts with minorities. Think how violent our nation is. Think what if there were a super, super power so big that we didn't dare even slap back or strike back at them that were coming to our minorities with huge sums of money and arms and, and, and training people from our minority groups and sending them into the country to do open acts of violence how we would rise up and the bloodbath that would ensue. And this has been a technique the CIA has used in Nicaragua, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Laos, in the Congo, in, in Iran, Iraq with the Kurds in different parts of the world. We created, trained, and funded death squads like the Treasury Police in El Salvador that are responsible for killing as many as 70,000 people according to the count of the Catholic Church. And we've assassinated world leaders, including the United States President in 1963, and I'll get to that in more detail in just a moment. Getting back to the subject of democracy, and that's, that's something that Bush and everyone is talking about right now, uh, I remind you of Chile. In 1973, the CIA organized the overthrow of Salvador Allende, the democratically elected president of Chile. And he was killed in the process, and we killed General Schneider, who was the pro-U.S defender of the Constitution there, in order to put the CIA's representative Pinochet in power. And Henry Kissinger's, when he was grilled by the Congress over this program, his rationale was, 
Yet the issues are much too important for the Chilean voters to be left to decide for themselves. Now, there was a long CI destabilization and propaganda campaign against China. We were parachuting teams from Kemoi, Matsu, uh, Tibet, Burma, Thailand to destabilize China with the propaganda campaign. The propaganda aimed at the United States as well as uh, China and other parts of the world until eventually we talked ourselves into the Korean War in which a million people were, where we fought China and Korea and a million people were killed. There was a long CI destabilization propaganda campaign against Vietnam until we talked ourselves into going into Vietnam to fight and two million people were killed. Again, read for yourselves. Read Bill Blum's book, The CIA of Forgotten History. Read Portrait of a Cold Warrior by Joseph Burkholder Smith, who was a CIA case officer in Southeast Asia. Read Fire in the Lake by Francis Fitzgerald, the daughter of Desmond Fitzgerald, the famous CIA chief of operations of Southeast Asia. Read Deadly Deceit by Ralph McGeehy, another case officer who served in Southeast Asia. Read Decent Interval by Frank Snap, who covered the period of time in Vietnam, 73, 75. He and I were colleagues there at that time. Or if you will, read my own book, In Search of Enemies by Norton, which remains the only insider's detailed account of the, of the inner functionings of a covert action. Or read Washington's War on Nicaragua by Holly Sklar, not written by an insider, but a remarkable detail on the Nicaraguan operation, great detail of how that operation has been run. Trying to come to grips with these CIA activities and these broad numbers, trying to figure out how many people have been killed, you can count it up different ways. You can never be sure how many people are killed in the jungles of, of Laos or the hills of Nicaragua. But adding them up as best we can, we come up with a figure of six million people killed, minimum figure, it has to be more than that. A million in the Korean War, two million in the Vietnam War, 800,000 in Indonesia, a couple of million in Cambodia, 20,000 in Angola, the operation I was part of, 22,000 in Nicaragua, again the figure the New York Times cites. You're dealing with large numbers of people who died who would not have died if our tax dollars had not been spent by the CIA to exacerbate the situations and destabilize and set people to fighting. So you began to analyze these figures to figure out who, who, who are these six million people we've killed. And again, that's a minimum figure. The conservatives tell us it's a dangerous world. Our enemies have to die so we can be safe and secure. Some of them say, I'm sorry about that, but that's the way the world is. We have to accept this reality. So you begin to study these things and rip through them and analyze them and break them apart and you find some shocking common denominators come out to you. Namely, for example, since 1954 we do not parachute teams into the Soviet Union to destabilize the country in a brutal way. Coincidentally, 1954 was the first year the Soviets developed their actual capability of actually dropping atomic weapons on the United States. Uh, for other reasons, we don't do these things in England, France, Sweden, Norway, Belgium, etc. These things are all done in countries of the third world where the governments don't have the power to force the United States to stop destabilizing the country and brutalizing their people. These six million people killed are people of the Mitumba Mountains of the Congo and the jungles of Southeast Asia and the hills of northern Nicaragua. Conspicuously, there are people who don't have ICBMs or armies or navies. They don't have any capability of doing physical hurt to the United States. The 22,000 killed in Nicaragua, for example, they're conspicuously not Russians. They're not Cuban soldiers or advisors. They're not even percentage-wise mostly Sandinistas. They're mostly rag-poor peasants, including a high percentage of women and children. Communists. I'm sorry, they're mostly Roman Catholics. Enemies of the United States, I can't give you that one either because we have all these witnesses who've gone down to live in their villages with them and they invariably come back to testify that the Nicaraguans are the warmest people on the face of the earth and they love people from the United States and they simply cannot understand why we would want, our leaders would want to rationalize spending a billion dollars on a contra force to go into their villages to kill them and mutilate them while their families are forced to watch. Meanwhile, CI activities, of course, have taken their own, left their own permanent mark on U.S. society. The MK Ultra program, I'll talk about it in greater detail if you like in the question and answer, 
We don't have full detail about this, but we have enough to know enough to be thoroughly chilled by it. The pro-agency book, The Agency, by John Rainlay, which is the memoirs of CIA founders Larry Houston, Ray Klein, and others, says that there were 175 different projects in that one program. We know of about five of them. These were experimentations with swine fever, with dengue fever, with deadly diseases, with psychedelic drugs, on American population groupings without their permission in many cases. If you were reading the newspapers in October of 1988, you noticed that there was a settlement declared between the CIA and the victims at McGill University in Canada where the CIA had been working with a mad psychiatrist who was taking the patients who came to him for help and shooting them up with hallucinogenic drugs to experiment with their minds instead of healing them. And this was a CIA program for which, with your tax dollars, we eventually paid damages to the, to the victims. Read In Search of the Manchurian Candidate by John Marks, published by New York Times Press in 1979, based on 14,000 documents gotten out of the, the CIA under the Freedom of Information Act, or go through the back issues of Covert Action Information Bulletin, which has a dozen solid articles about this program. Colonel White, one of the founders of this program, one of the founders of the CIA, retiring about the time I went in in the mid-60s, wrote from retirement a letter about uh, to a friend and then agreed to have it published. Why not, he said. And so we have it in his handwriting. He wrote, I toiled wholeheartedly in the vineyards because it was fun, fun, fun. Where else could a red-blooded American boy lie, kill, cheat, steal, rape, and pillage with the blessings of the old highest? Then we have the MH Chaos program and the COINTEL Pro program, CI and FBI programs, where they were manipulating student and labor organizations and civic organizations, disrupting them, trying to redirect them. We have the findings of the church committee that they were getting journalists, up to about 200 journalists, including some of the biggest names in the business, and getting them to cooperate with the CIA to put its propaganda into our media so that we would be influenced with misunderstandings of what was happening in Southeast Asia, or Korea, or Vietnam, or China, or Central America, or other parts of the world that our government wanted to destabilize and attack and fight wars. Co-opting professors to work with the CIA to, mis to manipulate student groups and build files on students. Publishing 1,200 books in which they were paying professors, scholars, journalists to write books in their names. And these books are still in our libraries today because the church committee couldn't force the CIA to reveal the titles, CIA propaganda, so that if you're doing your dissertation on the Vietnam War, for example, probably one or two dozen of the books that you'll have in your bibliography, if not more, will in fact be CIA propaganda. Now they've sent the Contras back into the country, they being George Bush and the CIA managers, they are still providing them with what they call humanitarian aid. And in a war situation, there is no humanitarian aid for the combatants. You're buying uniforms and boots and, and food for them, while private sources give them arms. They've sent several thousand of these troops into the country now to resume the military activities to destabilize the country as it goes into its second election process. And when Ortega has, has said we can't have a ceasefire if they're killing people in the country as they're doing, then we attack them and say, see, it's all their fault as we've been doing throughout. This thing that happened in Costa Rica last week where George Bush was down there for a meeting and he met with Ortega and Ortega announced that he would have to, 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 to nullify the ceasefire and put his troops back into trying to maintain the peace was uh, George Bush's reaction was the ugliest thing, I, I mean viscerally, in terms of the dignity of a world leader that I recall seeing since Lyndon Johnson was president of this country as a Texan, I can say that. He was not a graceful man. Bush, with an ugly look on his face, referred to this little man in his green uniform breaking up our garden party. And Ortega eventually replied, and then he kept saying, us democratically elected leaders, and he's coming in here breaking up our garden party. Now, he didn't bother to mention, and I must say the media, working like silly putty uh, to his lead, nobody said at the time, none of the commentators said at the time, but President Bush, do you, do you forget, Ortega was also democratically elected. 
and no one stood up and said, yes, but people are dying in Nicaragua. 